There is nothing more exciting than starting a new bullet journal for a new year, and 2024 is already shaping up to be something of a fairy tale. Hi, it's Erin. I'm so excited that you're here to plan with me for 2024. Introducing my 2024 bullet journal, this is the Reverie Journal Classic Collection in Sage Green from Mellow Days, which is one of their amazing watercolour paper notebooks. I wanted to put my name in the front here before we do anything else, so it really feels like my new journal. I've seen a few of my favourite creators use these Reverie journals for their bullet journals, and I wanted to give it a go for myself. I wanted to really challenge myself in 2024 to try new things, so I'm going to be experimenting with lots of paint in my journal this time. But if you're more of a stickers and washi tape type of person, please don't worry, I'm going to still have videos for you as well. There's a secret project coming very soon, keep an eye out for that. But for now we're going to start with a quote page for the very first page in my 2024 setup. The first page in a journal is usually glued to the first end sheet and doesn't sit very nicely, so I usually skip that one and start with the pretty things on the facing page. And I'm going to be painting all throughout this setup with gouache paint but in a way that actually requires zero artistic skill because I don't really know how to use gouache paint yet. I imagine I'm going to learn over the next six months. I was very inspired by vintage storybooks for this setup, which you know I've been in my fantasy era for the past six months or so, maybe longer. I wanted to recreate the look of a gorgeous leather bound, gold embossed vintage fairy tale storybook. So I'm masking off areas of the paper so I can get very nice, crisp, clean lines. And I'm using the gouache paint just to completely fill the area that is masked off. We'll have this nice crispy line when we take off the washi tape. So I'm just using washi tapes that I don't care that much about for this part because they're going into the bin. And then I'm going to use stamps with a gold acrylic paint marker to get me the look of the embossing that you would find on a vintage storybook, which means as much as there is paint going on in this design, it's actually very easy to recreate yourself if you'd like to. This is one of my absolute favourite stamps. It is from Journal Say. It has this lovely vine design. I'm not using all of it every time I stamp it because I want it to hug the corners here, so I'm using a gold acrylic paint marker from Artex, and I'm colouring in the stamp with that and then stamping it down on the corners. You'll notice I'm using an extra piece of paper here to protect the paper where I'm stamping over an area where part of the stamp will also touch the paper that I don't want ink to transfer on. I'm going to stop doing that after a while because it's been drying on the stamp anyway so I found it wasn't transferring so it wasn't necessary but if you like to be extra cautious you can do that. I picked up these amazing old letterpress stamps when I was in London back in January and I've been waiting for the opportunity to use them. I actually found them online so I could get the rest of the alphabet because I only bought the letters to do the initial for each month. You guys, I've been planning this setup for such a long time. I'm testing them out on some paper that is separate to my journal first because I find with these ones, they're not very even, they're very old, they're antique stamps, so you need to kind of massage them to get the impression that you're after. And also the watercolor paper is quite textured, so they really don't stamp very well on the paper at all. So I'm using this separate piece of paper as a reference and then just kind of copying the details over with the end of my Tombow Jewel brush pen that I'm also using to color in each of the stamps. Look, this might actually work better with a stamp pad, but I don't own very many stamp pads. So I'm just going with what I have. All throughout this setup, I'm going to be using those beautiful ornate stamps as a drop capital like you would see in a vintage storybook, and then I'm using my regular letter stamps to finish off the word or the phrase. As always, there are links to everything I'm using in the description of this video in case you want to get your hands on any of it for yourself. And if you scroll down further in the description, I also have some discount codes for some of the stores as well, so you can save yourself a little bit of money, and I will also make a little bit of affiliate commission, which is always nice. <laughs> My quote this time is from Hans Christian Andersen, arguably the king of fairy tales. It is life itself is the most wonderful fairy tale. And it's hard to see on camera, but the gold sections have this beautiful sheen. Before we go any further in the setup, I wanted to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Skillshare is an online learning hub for creatives absolutely bursting with classes to help you learn new skills and put them to work in impactful ways. Skillshare classes cover topics ranging from creative pursuits like illustration, graphic design, photography, or music, all the way through to marketing and productivity, all designed so that you can learn what you want to learn at your own pace in a way that fits your lifestyle. I've taken a lot of arty classes on Skillshare in the past about painting, digital illustration, interior design and calligraphy, but lately I've been feeling a bit overwhelmed by all the things on my to-do list and I've been noticing my habits and goals have been slipping on my priority list. I definitely don't want to start 2024 in a state of total chaos, so I turned to Skillshare's productivity category and I took Thomas Frank's class called Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last. 
I honestly think everyone everywhere should take this class, especially if you keep track of goals and habits in your bullet journal like me. Thomas really digs into finding the why behind the goals you want to achieve and building intentional habits around those goals. He covers ways to keep yourself accountable when it gets hard to stay on track and what to do when you fail, which is so helpful and affirming. I really needed to hear so much of what Thomas shared in this class. Now I feel like I can use these last few weeks of 2023 to set myself up with clear and refined goals and habits for the new year so when 2024 rolls around I can hit the ground running and you can too the first 500 people to click my link can get a one month free trial of Skillshare and start learning honing and leveling up your skills right away thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and helping me get clear on my goals again <laughs> with that onward to the cover spread which is always one of the most exciting spreads to set up I'm going to be covering a lot more of the page this time with my gouache paint. And when I was in the planning stages for this setup, I looked at a lot of reference photos of vintage storybooks and I couldn't decide between three really popular colors. There are lots of rich jewel tones. I was thinking red, purple, or green. Obviously we've already used some green on the previous page. I wasn't super into the red because I had a lot of red in last year's spreads because the cover of my first journal for last year was also a beautiful burgundy red. So I wanted to avoid that a little bit. I took it to my channel members when we did the live stream where we sketched out all of these layouts together and we also did a little test in the back of this journal. Mitsu's come to check how everything's going and really wants to walk in some wet paint. I wish you wouldn't do that. But I took it to my lovely channel members in our live stream and I said, what do you guys think? Do you like the purple or the green? And it was a pretty even split. So I ended up deciding to do both and just alternate. So we're doing a purple spread this time where the previous was green. I've let that paint dry really well on the page and now I'm jumping in with a giant stamp. This one is a repeating floral kind of leafy pattern and this one doesn't work quite as well with the paint marker as it probably would with a stamp pad. But I do not have an appropriate stamp pad so we're working again here <laughs> with what I've got. The issue with the paint marker for this much surface area is that it starts to dry on the areas that you coloured in first before you can finish colouring in the whole area of the stamp that you want to place on the page. So you kind of have to work in sections. It looked a little messy before we took off the tape, I admit, but once you take the tape off, I actually think this looks pretty good. And I've left a space on the middle of the left and right pages where I can put a nice big, large, ornate 2024 for 2024. I looked up some fonts online. I can't remember exactly which font it is that I've taken inspiration from here, but it was some kind of beautiful block slab serif, I think. And I'm using that same gold paint marker to add that there so that it matches really beautifully with the color of the gold that's elsewhere in the decorations. I have a fair few gold paint markers, but this one is kind of the coolest, most champagne-y kind of tone, which is what I really liked for this setup. I wasn't in love with the shape of the zero so I'm using my trusty white paint marker to cover over that a little bit and I discovered on the previous page that adding a border around the edges of the paint gives it a really lovely finished kind of a look so I wanted to level that up a little bit further here make this page a bit more ornate I'm using a corner stamp from stationery pal here and I've only got the one corner here I can't flip it so it's a perfect mirror image but I can flip it so that it hugs each corner at least so I'm doing that for all of the corners and then grabbing a ruler to connect up all of these sections so that it makes a really lovely little floating frame around the outside of the paint edges. My paint marker has jewel tips so it has a bullet nib on one end and a brush tip on the other. I wouldn't recommend doing this with a brush tip, the bullet nib works okay with a ruler but you do have to be a bit careful that you aren't carving up the tip of the pen and ruining it as you do this kind of thing. Rulers aren't always very kind to felt tip markers unfortunately. Just adding some finishing touches, i.e. some stamping in specific areas that I maybe missed earlier. And there we have it, the 2024 cover spread is done and I think it looks so pretty. 
Let's move on to the future log, which I believe is kind of an essential part of a bullet journal setup, even though if I'm being totally honest with you, I don't always flip back to these pages very often. I'm going to be removing the right side of the right page here so that you can see the page that's underneath. Really, that's just for efficiency's sake so that I only have to decorate once on each side here. I've masked off a bar on each edge of the page. We're going back to green this time rather than purple. We're gonna alternate between each spread. And in the space that's currently empty next to these green bars, I'm going to have three months to a page, just a tiny little calendar and the name of each month and some space to write any events or reminders that I need for each of those months so I can flip back and refer to those when I'm setting up my individual monthlies. Or I can look at my Google Calendar, which I am probably more likely to do. But I feel like the journal is incomplete without a future log, so even though I don't use it that often, I really like to have it. And I thought this one was going to be really pretty. And guess what? It turns out exactly the way I wanted it to, which is so much fun and doesn't happen that often. Also, January 1st, 2024 is a Monday, and I like my weeks to start on Monday. So setting up this year is just so incredibly satisfying. <laughs> My vintage stamps are definitely struggling a little bit more on the left page than they are on the right page here. I think that's just because I'm close to the beginning of the journal so it doesn't sit completely flat on my page the way it will when I'm kind of halfway through. The pages do lay flat and that's very nice and easy and comfortable to use but it's the same with any new hardcover journal where when you put it on your desk you have to put something under that left side otherwise the journal will feel kind of unbalanced and it's a little bit tricky so that's also the case with any kind of stamp, especially if it's a little bit larger. It will be easier to stamp on a flatter surface, and obviously the left page here is a slightly more rounded surface because of the way the journal has to open. I'm adding a tiny little initial for each day of the week underneath the header for each one of these. I didn't quite space them exactly the way I should have, but we will fix that on the next spread, and it still looks pretty, so I don't mind. And I decided to add just a little ruler line underneath each one to separate it from the numbers and make it look that little bit more printed. If you have stamps available to you that will stamp all of the numbers for a month, then I definitely recommend using those for a future log setup like this because your hand can get very tired writing out many, many tiny numbers. I remember that being really hard when I first started bullet journaling. Setting up a future log made my hand so tired. I think just seven years of bullet journaling at this point have got me to a place where my hand is very well trained and quite strong. So writing out all of the numbers for this actually didn't slow me down at all, which is kind of amazing. And now we add the beautiful gold accents now that the paint is dry on both the left and right sides here using the same stamps that I used for the quote page. And I'm also mixing in a few select stamps from the fantasy and fiction stamp set from the Quirky Cup Collective. I wanted to add some extra little fantasy details here. So I'm adding crowns and swords and hourglasses and roses and things like that to give it that extra storybook vibe. While we set up all of the numbers and lettering for the second spread of the future log here, I just wanted to ask you if you're enjoying the video, would you mind hitting the like button for me just so that YouTube knows that you liked it and thinks, hey, maybe I'll show this to some other people. Also, if you're here and you're not subscribed, but you're enjoying what you see, you can hit the subscribe button in case you'd like to see more from me in the future. And if you're really having a good time, you can also join the channel, become one of my channel members. We have two levels of membership. One is called Remarkable Markers, who have access to some lovely little loyalty badges and emojis that are designed after my cat Mitsu. <laughs> the second tier is called Handlettered Heroes, and they have access to also some members-only polls, members-only live streams that we do each month to plan out the month ahead before we set it up. So sketching out everything and working out what stationery looks good with what stationery. We also have a private members only discord server for the hand lettered heroes and we've just started a book club in that discord so if you'd like to get in on that action we're starting in november it's going to be so much fun you can come and join us right away When 
Whenever I cut a Dutch door in my journal like this, I like to use a corner punch tool to round off the corners and make it look very intentional and deliberate and finished, although you have to get the corner punch on the exact right angle or sometimes it doesn't work too well. But anyway, we're moving on to the next page, super relevant to the things I've been learning through Skillshare lately. This is my goals page. And the right page is going to be for tracking social media stats, but I'm setting it up in a way that it sort of mirrors the goals page so that they look good next to each other. So we're gonna do them both at the same time. I'm dividing my goals up into three categories on the left side. So I've separated the box there into three sections as well so that it can reflect those three categories. And I'm doing similar things on the right side where I'm separating it by different social media platforms. I used to track several more accounts than this. I'm really just focusing on my bullet journal and stationery accounts now for here on YouTube and Instagram as well. I'm not tracking the photography accounts quite so much anymore because I don't really care about growing them. So, you know, focusing on the goals that matter. I wanted to make sure I'd set up the functional parts of this page mostly before I got in there with the paint so that I really knew how much space I needed before I rendered any of the paper not functional with paint. On the previous spread, we did a bar down the left and right side. So this time we're doing a similar concept, but with the bars horizontal at the top and bottom of the page instead. And I'm also going to be using these sections for the headers. So they'll work into the ornate design of the storybook theme. Up until now, all of our text has been done in black ink, but this time we're gonna be doing it in gold. For the headers anyway, the rest of the text on the page will also be black because it doesn't need to stand out against a dark colored painted background. So we'll stick with black for the functional text, but for the headings this time, they'll be gold. While the paint is drying, let's go ahead and define what each of the goals categories are going to be and also what each of the social media accounts are that I'm going to track. The goals are split into personal, financial and business. I'm trying to make sure my goals this year are still achievable, but also pushing me a little bit. Sometimes I tend to get a bit too lofty on them and try to push myself too hard, but I want to be able to achieve my goals. So somewhere in the middle in a sweet spot there. And then I'm tracking YouTube and Instagram stats on the right page as well. And I've divided that into the first six months, January through to June, so that I've got space to track those for each month. I'm going to be moving the rest of the year into another journal from July onwards. So I'm going to continue tracking those in the next journal as well. So it's okay just to track up to June for now. I've left the bottom box open on the right page as well in case there is, you know, nobody kind of expected threads this year and then threads happened and then threads kind of stopped happening. I keep toying with the idea of being on TikTok, but TikTok also really scares me. So I'm not sure, but if I do jump on TikTok, I'll be able to track something there if I want to. So that's just leaving it flexible and open for future me. I feel like this theme has a tendency to look like trash until you take off the tape. And I guess that makes sense because the tape is kind of busy in this case, but look how good it looks, how clean it is once you take the tape off. It's so lovely. Adding the gold borders around the purple just to really finish this one off. And then this spread is complete. Okay, maybe I lied about it being complete. I've decided to jump back in with some more of my small fantasy stamps and just fill in the spaces on either side of the headings with some hourglasses and some potion bottles. Now it's complete and we can turn the page and this one is gonna be my cash flow tracker for the year. This is basically the same cash flow tracker setup as I did last year. I thought it worked really well. I love that I can fit it all on one spread. It's basically three tables that are all aligned so I can track my income for the year, my savings for the year, and also my spending for the year all in one place. Unfortunately, the dots don't perfectly line up between the left and right pages here, so my tables look a little bit wonky, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. As long as it functions, I don't really mind. The only change I'm making from last year's cash flow tracker is that I'm including an extra column for the saving section so I can put an opening balance there. I didn't have that last time and I found that I really needed it when I went to add my details into the spread. So that's something I'm bringing forward. I'm also only doing the first six months this time. I did the whole year on one spread last time. I just got annoyed with having to always get my journal out at the end of every month to track this stuff. So I decided to do it this way instead. Also, I totally didn't realize at the time until editing this video that I ruled those lines through the gap on the right side there in between the income and the savings tables. I didn't fix that. Oh, I still haven't fixed that, but I probably will. So if that's annoying you, I'm so sorry. It's annoying me too. 
Let's pretend we do not see it and carry on with the decorating. We're back to green this time around and we're doing the vertical bars again, very similar to what we did on the future log, except that there is no Dutch door this time because I only need two pages worth of space for this cash flow tracker. If you've ever watched any of my monthly setups, I always have a spending log in those. When I get to the end of the month, I tally up all of my spending by category and I transfer it over to this spending log overall so I can see across a whole year kind of how much money I spent on each category. I'll fill out those categories in a moment so you can see what I track. I do also run a small business and work from home so my spending categories might be different to what you would track in your own journal. But I really want to encourage you to try some financial tracking in your bullet journal. It helps me so much to know how much money I have saved in order to make choices that help me not spend that money that I have saved unless it's for the thing that I was saving for. For the first couple of months, it can be a bit intimidating and overwhelming, but I think after that, it becomes really empowering to know where your money's going. It helps you make better spending decisions, helps you make better saving decisions. And I think it's just a great thing to be practicing overall. So give it a go if you like, but also if you don't want to, that's fine. <laughs> You'll see me getting lazier and lazier with these stamps as we go because this one is starting to not stick to the silicon block very well anymore because I keep putting my finger oils on the back of it. So I'm kind of just coloring it in and sticking the stamp straight down instead, which is totally fine. I'll clean them later. Don't worry about it. As long as they keep stamping fine, I'm a happy chappy, so it's all good. <laughs> Now it's time to fill out the categories for each of these sections. So for the income section, I have a few different income streams. I'm a wedding and commercial photographer. So I separate like weddings and portraits into lifestyle. Commercial it has its own category and ESA is whatever money I make from this here YouTube channel and such social media ventures. The savings section I wanted to explain. So obviously bank and invested. I have some bank savings. I have some investments. Super is what we call retirement savings in Australia. It's short for superannuation in case you're wondering what that means. And the spending category, I'm just copying over my sections from last year. I had dining out and takeaway as one category for food last year. I'm splitting it up this time so that I can see the difference between when I actually go out to eat and when I get food and bring it home to eat on the couch, which is definitely the more common of the two. And the way this is ending up, I've got one space left at the bottom. So if I need to add a new category, I can just add it there and it's all good. I love future proofing the journal and leaving it a little bit flexible so that things can change as they need to. We're gonna turn the page again and move on to my content planner. I wanted to vary the decoration for this one. So this time I'm gonna be painting a block down the center of the page, which means it's gonna have the paint going right into the binding there, which I have done things like this before and had it bleed through onto a completely unrelated page. So I'm just flipping back in the book to see where this booklet ends. So the other half of the right page actually tucks under and is on the other side of my quote page here. And I don't want purple bleeding out next to my quote there because I really like how that page looks so I'm masking that one off with some washi tape too to protect it. We'll come back to this for decorating once the paint is dry but my inspiration for this one is like the spine of a beautiful vintage book with some frames so that's going to be fun but first let's talk a bit about the whole content planner thing. We're doing six months worth of content planning here and this is obviously relevant to me as somebody who makes YouTube videos and schedules stuff for Instagram as well. This comes in really handy for me. But if you are not somebody who makes content, there are so many other ways you could adapt this layout. It could be an assignment tracker for university or school if you have that going on. It could be a really nice way to keep track of birthdays of your loved ones. It could be a project management tracking tool for your workplace and you can really adapt it to whatever you like. It's basically a twist on a future log. So anything that you need to plan for in advance, this would be a really good way to do it. Even if it isn't necessarily YouTube videos like the way I use it. Let's get this tape off so we can add the decorative stamping elements to this page. Now this is a tricky spot to decorate with stamps. I admit I have done this to myself because it is the break in the middle of the page. It goes into the binding. 
They're not even, it's really hard to stamp across the two, but I can get most of the stamp on the page. So what I'm doing here is really just stamping what I can and then using the tip of the pen to fill in the gaps as well, pretty much like what I've been doing with the letter stamps. This square frame is from Journal Say, and I'm kind of using it as a reference, but because it's very ornate, you can kind of just scribble and squiggle around in the gaps, and it's gonna look basically like what it was supposed to look like anyway. So love that for us. I'm stamping it down the middle three times. Like I mentioned before, I sort of want this to look like a beautiful vintage ornate book spine. So stamping it three times, leaving a bit of a gap in the middle, and then I'm gonna use a different frame stamp, one that is not square, one that is silicon, which stamps in this kind of space a lot easier because it is flexible. <laughs> Probably should have thought of that sooner, but I really wanted the look of this square one, so I was willing to make it work, just do whatever it takes. This little squishy silicon stamp is a little bit wider than the space I need it to be, so it's gonna overlap a little bit with the square stamps. I don't mind that, I think that's totally fine. It kind of makes the design look connected. And I'm gonna use the space in the middle of these ones to stamp my content planner heading. I'm not going in this time with the ornate stamps that I got from London because I just think there's already quite a bit going on in this spine decoration area here. So also I'm not totally sure that it would have fit in the space. So I'm gonna be using just the normal letter stamps instead. And I think that is just fine. As much as I love a drop capital, I don't think I need them every time. <laughs> there are already six of them on the page. So we can go without just this once. We're gonna flip back now that this is done to the front page here where I put the washi tape. You can see some of the purple has still bled through that little gap, but I don't mind it too much. And we are gonna come back and do something to that page later. I haven't even foreshadowed that yet, but um, something to help me set up future spreads, something that I have done before, you'll see, you'll see. But for now, we're going to highlight every second line with a gray Tombow so that I can see where things are going. I post new videos on Fridays all throughout the year, so I like to have the space where I'm going to write my Friday video available and really clear and easy to see here. So I'm mirroring the same thing on the right side as well. And that is all I'm going to need for my content planner spread. The shininess of this gold detail just makes me so happy every time I see it. We're turning the page again. This is going to be the last functional spread of the setup, although we will have one more spread after this one. The left side is for a monthly reset page, which is a new one for me. I've never done anything like this before. This is a little bit of an Erin keeping herself accountable, Erin hitting her goals kind of a thing, where at the end of every month or maybe the beginning of a month, I haven't decided yet, I'm gonna have this little list of things, not too many because I don't want it to be unachievable, but a little list of things that I will do at the beginning or end of every month as I decide that help me keep my house in order, help me keep my brain in order, <laughs> help me keep my finances in order. At the moment, I'm thinking it will be an end of month thing so that I can start every new month feeling on top of things and organized and being in a nice space because I do tend to let things get chaotic around me when things are busy. You should see my office right now where I'm filming this. Oh man, the desk looks great, but everything else around me is in absolute chaos. So maybe if I'd had a monthly reset already in place, it wouldn't be that way but here we are. So I'm hoping this is something that will help me next year. I'm trying it out. If it doesn't help me, it just won't come with me into my next journal and that's totally fine, but we will see. For decoration this time, we're doing a solid bar all the way across the top and all the way across the bottom rather than making it a box that is squared off. And I'm going back to my huge block leafy pattern here so that I can get a lot of bang for my buck, or at least that was my theory to decorate that whole section in one go. It didn't really work. I forgot how small an area I need to do here, but I'm kind of just now, as I'm learning, as I'm going, coloring in part of the stamp, putting it down, coloring in the next part, putting it down, coloring in the next part, kind of leaving it in contact with the page so that it all matches up. That worked pretty well. So I don't know, maybe I'll have a stamp pad the next time I want to use a stamp this size, but we'll see. The main thing is that it works. And when it's a repeating pattern like this, your brain doesn't really look that closely anyway. So it doesn't matter, right? It's fine. <laughs> This monthly reset table is kind of like just a big habit tracker that you just complete once a month. So I'm setting myself up here with space to write what the habit is in the left column. And then each of the six columns to the right of that are for a month. So rather than like a one, two, three, four, it's gonna be a January, February, March, April. Originally I'd set this up a lot higher on the page, but I changed my mind about how I wanted to set it out. So I moved it down a little bit, which is why it doesn't match up with the pencil lines that you can see behind it there. I'm flying by the seat of my pants here and changing it as I go. <laughs> I haven't 
totally dug into what I want these reset habits to be for each month. Besides, at the moment, I want to clean out my fridge and I want to clean out my car at the end of every month. So we're going to start with that and I will fill the rest out when I've had a chance to really think about it because I do still have all of November and December left to plan this stuff before we hit next year. So I will use that space. The right side here I'm using for highlights for each month. I did this with a photo last year and I really enjoyed that, but it did also make my book really thick and I'm not really sticking stuff into this one in the same way that I have been for most of 2023. So I decided I was gonna do a smaller highlights box. We're just gonna do the first six months again here rather than the whole year like I did last year. And I'm not sure yet if I will doodle, if I will write if I will maybe stick some smaller photos printed on a thinner sticker paper. I'm not totally sure yet. Right now I'm really just leaning towards a text list of things that were great in each month. I'm gonna have to try and train myself to be conscious of them because at the moment I couldn't make you a list of things that were great in October, but you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn, it's gonna be okay. This one is a swatch spread, which is absolutely necessary for me. I once saw somebody refer to a swatch spread in a journal as being useless and I was like, excuse me, I refer to this page all the time. <laughs> I actually think it's especially useful for this new journal because this is a textured watercolor paper, which I've never had in one of my journals before. So I don't really know if the color is gonna show up quite the same on this. They'll probably show up better than they would on the paper that I've used in the past. When I'm setting up a new theme, I refer back to this swatch spread to match the colors in whatever stickers, paper, washi tapes, whatever it is that I'm using to my pens so that I can get a really close match and then have a really cohesive looking theme because the colors all match really well. Of course, I still needed to decorate so I didn't want to take up too much page space we're just doing a little triangle in each corner with a corner stamp over the top so that it matches with the theme without taking up all of the space that I need because your girl has a lot of pens and I'm also planning to swatch my paints in here because of course I am it's a watercolor journal I'm not doing that in this video we're just gonna do the Tombow jewel brush pens and the two sets of paint markers that I have but there will be more on this spread and if you want to see that let me know because we can swatch them together on a live stream or something if you'd like that could be really fun let me know if you want to see that and I will see what I can do I feel like that gives you a pretty good idea of how the swatch page works. Now we're gonna go all the way back to this page that I've abandoned at the beginning of the journal. And this one's a bit of a strange one. It always sits a bit funny. I don't love it. So I'm actually gonna remove the page. I'm using a craft knife and a metal ruler to do that. And I'm gonna turn the paper into a pocket that sits on this inside cover. And I'm gonna put a grid spacing cheat sheet ruler there. This is actually the paper that we cut off from the future log spread. So I'm using that. That was a great suggestion from Jen. Thank you so much for that, Jen, in the live stream. I'm gluing down this last little bit of paper that was left to the page next to it, since that's where it wants to sit anyway, and just helping it with a little bit of clear tape to stay in place. And now I'm going to put some markings on this loose piece of paper that tell me how many spaces there are horizontally across the page, how many spaces there are in the dot grid vertically from top to bottom, and then also some of the common divisions that I use, like dividing the page into half, dividing it into thirds, dividing it into quarters. I use these as a reference when I'm setting up a new layout. If I know I wanna divide a page into thirds for something, rather than having to count how many boxes I have, divide that number by three and work out how I'm going to fit things on the page. Instead, I can just flip to the pocket that we're about to make at the front of the journal. And I have a reference for that that I can just put on the page like a ruler and not have to measure anything. And I love that so much. Within my monthly spreads, I usually set up my weekly spreads very differently from month to month. So this is something that I use a lot for that. I did this at the beginning of my 2023 journal and I loved it and it worked beautifully for me. I'm going to fold it in half so it'll fit nicely here without sticking out the top of the journal. And I'm actually gonna write the heading grid space on the bookmark itself, on the ruler functioning. People call it different things. It's a bookmark, it's a ruler, it's whatever you need it to be. I'm writing it on that so that it will stick out of the top of the pocket like this and you'll be able to see it and it's cute. Now I need to adhere the pocket to the page somehow. So rather than paint this time, I'm using washi tape in this pattern that I think goes pretty well with our theme. I found it on Journal Say. It's very storybook vibes and I think it's great. I'm using that to completely cover the pocket, but also stick a little bit out on the right and left sides so that it will stick to the page as well and also underneath. And I had to cut off this bit that tore, so I'm just gonna stick that in the very front of my journal. And can you believe we are fully set up for 2024? 
Here is a little flip through of the finished product of everything that we've just worked on throughout this video. Thank you so much for planning with me. It means the world to me that you spent this time with me and I hope you got some inspiration for your own journal. If you did, I would absolutely love to see. Leave me a crown emoji in the comments if you made it all the way to the end of this video. Crown emoji crew, I love you so much. Thank you for sticking around all the way to the end. If you are interested in leveling up your skills for next year, don't forget to check out Skillshare for your one month free trial. There is a link in the description and also in the comments down below so you can find that really easily. I'm so excited with how this setup has turned out and I've had so much fun planning it out with you. I can't wait to start living in this fairy tale for 2024, but we have to wait a little while yet before I can do that. Having a whole notebook full of blank paper feels like absolute potential to me, and I'm so excited to see how I end up using the rest of these pages throughout this year. I'm really hoping that you will stick around and see how I use them too. If the storybook vibe isn't quite for you, there is a link up in the top right corner here to last year's plan with me video for the new year, which is much more floral, more stickers and washi tape than this one. And underneath that, you'll find a link to all of the plan with me videos that I did for 2023 all in one playlist. So you can keep watching from there. See you again soon. Bye.